Well, Mark Kimmett joins us also from Washington, D.C. He's a former Assistant Secretary of State for Political, Military Affairs and retired Brigadier General. Mark, always good to have you on the news hour. So we know Thanks. Antony Blinken arriving in Ukraine earlier on uh, Thursday, a surprise visit, some would say, but often we, we only hear about these things when they do happen because of security purposes. Uh, why do you think he's chosen uh, this point uh, to go to Kiev and speak to its leaders? Well, I think the most important thing is to show continued American support and American leadership in ensuring Ukraine has what it needs uh, to continue to battle the Russian aggression inside of Ukraine. Uh, there's a lot of uh, misunderstanding, a lot of propaganda going on there, as we heard from our two um, speakers just prior to this. And it's also a chance for uh, the United States to get an on-the-ground sense of what's really happening and, unfortunately, uh, what's being put out as propaganda. Well, coinciding with Anthony Blinken's visit was this announcement from Lloyd Austin, I believe, at the Rammstein uh, base in Germany about a massive aid package, $675 million going to Ukraine. How do you expect that yep. money to be used in, uh, in Kiev? Well, you see, again, this is a misunderstanding that people have. That is not $675 million in money. It's $675 million in uh, equipment that has already been purchased that is excess to our inventories and our own war fighting needs that we can pass on to the Ukrainians. And candidly, we're running out of advanced equipment and we're starting to send second tier equipment. But that, there's no new money associated with that uh, tranche of weapons. It's simply 675 million worth of equipment that has been purchased in the past. And so what is the type of equipment that Ukraine will uh, then receive? And how much training may, may its soldiers actually need in using some of that equipment? Well, I think in many cases, they've already done the training for the most critical items that we're still able to provide, the HIMARS uh, equipment, the transportation, the ammunition. Uh, those the Ukrainians already have some particular expertise in. So I didn't necessarily see... Uh, a lot of new uh, equipment that would require new training. And Mark, this aid package is also going to other European countries. The U.S. says is at risk yep. of attacks from Russia. So what should we be reading into that? Are there now heightened concerns again that Moscow will take military action against other countries? Well, I think we've got to be concerned that uh, it is clear that President Putin has not achieved his objectives inside of Ukraine. Uh, he may, since he is bogged down and his forces are bogged down inside of Ukraine right now, he may try to tip the balance on what's going on uh, in the uh, region by perhaps uh, a either threats or an actual attack into the NATO territory. I personally don't think he will do that. There's a huge difference between uh, supporting Ukraine, which is not a NATO nation, or attacking Ukraine, which is not a NATO nation. But if the President Putin decides to attack into a NATO nation, uh, it's not just one country that he'll be fighting. It's 26 countries that will be fighting that have an obligation to fight. Uh, and for this station, Turkey is one of those countries that is obligated to fight to defend other NATO nations. Yeah, and it was actually just yesterday that we heard the Turkish president, it was something that was reiterated today, uh, I believe, by Lloyd Austin, that uh, they all believe that this war is not ending anytime soon. We're well six months and more uh, into yep. it. Concerns about what's going to happen in the coming months when it is going to be decidedly colder in Ukraine and, and Russia. And I would think that the military support now being received from the U.S. and other Western allies is indicative of that continued support uh, and in for the long run. Uh, yeah, this war going well into next year, many believe. Oh, I think it's going to go on beyond that. Uh, NATO, uh, through President Biden, has said, well, we're there for as long as it takes. But despite this misinformation that's being reported, even on this channel, that the Ukrainians are in the middle of this huge counteroffensive, uh, in fact, it's a very small counterattack around Kherson. It's not making a lot of progress. It's tough fighting. The Russians have built up that area for quite some time to defend. So what I think we will continue to see going into the winter are these small, in many ways, meaningless militarily counterattacks, but they do boost the morale 
of the countries, they demonstrate to the NATO countries it is worth continuing to support Ukraine because they are now fighting. And it also demonstrates that uh, Ukraine now is off their back feet. They've been defending since February, and now they're actually starting to take the fight to the Russians. But at this point, it's pretty marginal what they've accomplished. And as we get into the winter time, it's going to be even tougher to conduct these types of advances. Mark Kimmett, as always, appreciate uh, your analysis. Speaking to us there from the U.S. Capitol.